What's up, everybody? <clears throat> Excuse me. In the booth today, I'm uh, about to do, do a little bit of warming up, and I need to, need to see if I, I can even like record tonight. Like last night was a uh, was a weird night. I uh, <clears throat> had some chicken wings or something during the day. This could be a gross. I don't know if it's gross to. Sh too gross to share, but it's, it's the human body is weird. Um, so like one or two in the morning, I wake up like having acid reflux and like choking on <laughs> my own like throw up, I guess. I don't know. <clears throat> Stomach acid. Like, you know, you wake up <clears throat> and gasp and I must have sucked in some stomach acid or something to my lungs. So I've been like, like today has been awful. I've been hacking all day long. Um, my throat doesn't, my voice doesn't feel 100%. So I'm going to do a little warm up here. I got some tea. I got some tea steeping. I'm going to see if I can do this and at least get a chapter done in Alpha Blood because deadline is looming. I need to get this into my editor um, like this week. I need to, crunch time. Crunch time has to happen. We got to get this in there to get it into the editor. I need to do pickups because I... Oh, did, did my screen just go weird? I need to do pickups because, of course, you know, I'm going to misread stuff. And, um, so yeah, so I'm going to do a little warm up here. I just got a shipment of some, some like real paperbacks from hell. So I'm going to do a real little bit of, uh, William Scholl's Bride of Satan. I love, 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 love 80s horror paperback. Titles, titles, the covers, all of it, awesome, love it. Look at that. Everyone goes, no Stranger Things. Is that Stranger Things font that you use for your logo? Is that Stranger Things font? No, it's horror paperback font. Damn it! Look, Bride of Satan. No Stranger Things font there. No Stranger Things font, isn't it? No, it's freaking like the classic. 80s horror paperback font, everybody. Made popular, I believe, by Stephen King. Everyone was so, yeah, we're all copying Stephen King. Or whoever decided to put his name in that font. I can't remember the, I can't remember the name of the font. I'm rambling. Oh, uh, Benguet. Benguet? Benguet? That's the name of the font. You have to, like, you have to buy it. Or no people. <clears throat> Here we go. The Bride of Satan by William Scholl. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Look at. I mean, come on, people. Modern books don't look like that, like this. And all the modern redesign of uh, Stephen King books, those look awful. Are you kidding me? Like, uh. Yeah, the modern redesign of the Stephen King covers, pure shit. All right, <clears throat> we need more stuff like this, people. This is a horror novel. Bride of Satan by William Scholl. Prologue. And I've never read this book before. 1887. The nation of Samara in Asia. Sister Venicus lifted her head and saw with dismay that her prayers had not been answered. She had not been magically transported to another time, another place, out of this sweltering hothouse they called a train that tore across the isolated terrain like a fire-breathing dragon on metal wheels. She was still inside the railroad car, packed in with those dozens of diseased, ugly people people with whom she would have to live and sleep and break bread, but not here on this train, but in Benpur, their destination. People to whom she would have to minister. She tried to summon compassion for those pathetic wretches, tried to feel something when she saw their hollow faces, withered bodies, and op the open, festering sores, 
the black, shallow looks of the children. But all Sister Venicus could feel was disgust. Sister Venicus felt so lost. She lifted the withering left arm, the bony, almost useless appendage that had been crushed in a childhood accident. The bones had snapped and her middle finger had been severed when a wagon overturned on her. And realized with some irony that in spite of her affliction, she was perhaps the healthiest person on board this train. It was bad enough for the other passengers, who were garbed only in sheets and sandals. But Sister Venicus was stifling under the heavy robes she had to wear at all times. Her hand reached beneath the her hand reached beneath the enveloping wimple on her head, and it wiped away dripping streaks of dirt and sweat. For a moment, Sister Venicus smiled. So many people mistook her for so many people mistook her for a Catholic nun. The sisters of the Holy Messianic Church, some of them at least, were nothing like the nuns of the Roman Catholic Church. They only had to pretend to be hold on. <clears throat> they only had to pretend to be. Sister Venicus again felt a flash of bitterness. And yes, hatred, as she recalled the last conversation she'd had with the Mother Superior in England before embarking on this terrible journey to nowhere. Flashback. Hold on, I'm going to make myself some tea. I'm going to mute this because I may have to do a, ha do a hacker, you know. Does this work? No? No? Mike. Does the mic not mute? Dag nabbit. Dag nabbit, dag nab, this mic not working. All right, whatever. Hold on. All right, whatever. <clears throat> if I hack, I hack. I've got some throat coat here, some throat coat tea in the steeper. And I've got some honey in here in my Screamcast mug. My Screamcast mug, the the podcast I, I I am trying to keep alive, but I've been so busy with this stuff that's been really hard to keep the podcast stuff up. We'll see if this uh, see this bit C helps my voice a little bit. It's feeling okay. I think I could do a chapter at least on Out for Blood. I just don't want to um. crowded in here. The last thing I want is like a chapter um, being noticeably hoarse. On one of my first books, Realm Bound, I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. And um, you'll hear, like, like, for once, like my, for one thing, like my recording space changed. So when I went back to do pickups, I was in here, as opposed to being in my other space. And you can tell the difference on every single punch in and section that I would redo. And then, um, there's a couple chapters where I'm like hoarse as hell and I was trying to hit the deadline and I recorded anyway and you can tell. You can tell. And I don't want that, but we shall see. <clears throat> Here we go. We'll read the flashback and then I'm done. This is my warm up. It will be done. Then I'll do a couple of my tongue twister cards. They were in Sister Angelica's chambers, a dark octo octagon octagonal, bleh, a dark octagonal room with a multitude of clocks and tables full of papers. Arch-shaped globs of light came in through the windows, dissecting the chamber into several sections, and crisscross shadows littered the floor. I'm afraid, Sister Venicus, the Mother Superior said. Your request for a transfer has been Your request for a transfer has been denied. She held up a finger, her warning that the sister was not to speak until permitted. 
I know how much you've been wanting to join the Order of the Morning Sisters. And I know why you jo and I know why you wish to join them. But I'm afraid we have decided you do not have enough spiritual balance to be one of the sisters of that order. The Morning Sisters have a very special place in our church. They are sacred and revered. And knowledge has been imparted to them that none of the rest of us can share. In short, Sister Venicus, we find you unworthy. I am sorry. Sister Venicus bristled. She knew what the real reason was. She had been too critical of the Mother Superior. She had dared to speak out when she saw how badly the woman ran things, the mistakes she made in matters of faith and discipline. Unworthy? The very idea. She knew that she was, in fact, one of the worthiest, far more than this far more than the Mother Superior. She was being punished. That was all. Being punished for daring to have her say. We have decided that you should be assigned to mission work in Samaria, the Mother Superior continued. There is an epidemic there. Many people need assistance. You ought to be sent to an outpost a hospital they have opened for the victims in the town of Benpol. She smiled. It will be good for you. It will be good for you, Sister Venicus. It will keep your mind off things. It will draw out your... It will draw you out of yourself and strengthen your religious principles. All of us sisters need at times to go out in the field and share our love of God Show our love to the sick and needy. Sister Vinicus had barely heard of the small Asian nation of Samaria, and certainly had no desire to go to such a useless, filthy country, especially one where the dying outnumbered the living. But there was nothing she could do. Sister Angelica's words were final. Yeah, that's first uh, couple pages of Bride of Satan <clears throat> by William Scholl. So, I, uh, some of these I'm hoping I can track down and maybe they don't have an audiobook narrator. Maybe I can work something out. We'll see. But anyway, Bride of Satan. Starting off great, right? I'm excited. I want to find some time to actually read these. I'm trying to work in trying to do a couple books working on my reading that I'm not narrating just to kind of keep the reading up and then I'm and of course I always have an audiobook that I'm listening to um, to kind of keep you know I'm try to find narrators better than me most are most of the big guys are <laughs> I don't know I'm rambling now all right time to do some out for blood Thanks for watching me on my little warm up. Oh, I got to do a couple cards. Of uh, seashells and pickled peppers. Good stuff. Of course, by Leo Wiggins. LeoWiggins.com. If you need these, get them. They're awesome. Awesome. Okay. Zany Zebras Zig and Zag. Unusually, leisure is measured in massages, my liege. Two trapped tiny tri tired in true tridents. Theodore Thrussell threw 33 thimbles into a thicket of thistles. All right, I'm Shonda Rager. Time to get to work. Let's do this. I think I'll be able to knock out a chapter or two. Thanks for hanging out with me during my warm-up session, and I will talk to all of you next time. Bye.